Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's been two days since the, uh, since the last episode. I'm over it. 9ZT4, Dr. 29. It's like a, a, a cyberpunk anti-aging clinic's founder. Ah, crap, okay. Be cool. This is not, you don't want to tussle with this guy early on. He's he's got incredible agility. Look at the agi check. It's out of control. There we go. We actually got him. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Okay. Um you know, I I could say a lot about the previous run. It was horrendous. Uh and and I think it is like the perfect example of uh how I feel about Isaac right now, both good and bad. You know? Um I I really feel like I didn't realize it until maybe like within the past two or three months, but we are in like a, an Isaac desert. Like I am, I am crossing pretty easily could be killed here. I'm crossing the, the Sahara Desert right now of Isaac content. We just left, uh, I don't know where the Sahara Desert starts to be honest. We just left wherever the Sahara Desert starts. Um, and we know on the other side, there's all uh, the beautiful riches of Addis Ababa, a.k.a. Addis Ababa is you. But for right now, life is pain. Um, we seem on, on many of our runs to be saddled uh, with, with thirst. A quest for... Uh, actually good items that never seem to come to pass but that's okay is the other you know sometimes ah sometimes the process is the goal you know what i mean i've been thinking about this with respect to working out you know which is how i know most people will tune this out immediately however i think it has like a you know, it's something to meditate on in your life as well, if that makes sense. You know, when I when I worked out when I was younger, it was like I, I had goals. Oh, I want to have, like, ripped abs. Oh, I want to look like Gerard Butler in 300. Despite the fact that he's, like, 35 and I'm, like, 19. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he's, got, he's got a little bit of, of dad strength that I, uh, I, I couldn't aspire to at that time. But, you know... It was goal-oriented. Even now, um, you know, there's that temptation, you know, oh, I want to, like, you know, set a new uh, personal oh, best as far as, like, my strength goes or something like that. And, and having goals is important because it gives you a little extrinsic motivation to work towards. But the other thing about working out is that the process is the goal, you know? You're setting challenges for yourself. Uh, you're setting a routine for yourself that you, you meet every day. It's a way to prove your own uh, inner strength and discipline to yourself as well. Every episode of Isaac that we do when ooh, when we're in this uh, content desert, we put one foot in front of the other. We get a little bit closer to the riches of Addis Ababa, and it'll be that much sweeter once we get there. Yeah, we could go into hyper sleep. Start playing Dead Cells instead until December or whenever the heck the DLC is actually going to come out. But just remember, you know, you ever... Is it Mother Hen? What's the... I always get Chicken Little and Mother Hen confused. Chicken Little is, uh... Chicken Little tells you that the sky is falling. Even if it did, then it still be coming back to... Oh, 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 oh. That's right. I'm familiar with hard rock, such as Aerosmith. Sure. I mean, we really need a tears upgrade. Th this is now really good stats. So if there is a sense of humor on planet Earth, we will be killed instantaneously here. Um, just remember, you know, I'm the one baking the bread. You know why I I'm the one eating the bread is what I meant to say. You know why I'm the one eating the bread? Because I'm the one who planted the wheat. I'm the one who watered the wheat. I'm the one who cultivated and harvested the wheat. I'm the one who took the wheat inside, ground it down into flour. 
I'm the one who took the flour, kneaded it in the dough, and put it in the oven. That's why I'm the one who gets to eat the bread. Never forget. <clears throat> hey. When new Isaac DLC comes out. I don't know why. This is like inviting toxicity on my colleagues. It's not the case. You can really play whatever you want, whenever you want. I'm just trying to glorify myself. If I could do it without uh, making anybody else feel worse, that would be ideal. But anyway. I do believe that, though. Not not the bread part. That was just a... That was just meant to be a relatable little Aesop's fable for you. Hold on, let's see what we got in our deal here first before we make any any rash decisions. I think I'm willing to give it a shot, believe it or not. And uh, let's let's use a uh, crooked penny on the shop, which is something I just neglected, forgot to do earlier. Um, I do believe that you know, especially and and this is not an age bit. I'm I'm very hesitant to do any bits related to my age, because it turns out I'm just continuing to get older, much to my surprise. It's not really true. It's not It's not to my surprise at all. You know, I'm, I've never been one of those people who's like, I don't think I'm gonna live until I'm like 40. I'm like, dude, I'll probably live forever. And then, you know, prove me wrong. I don't actually believe I'm gonna live forever. Because remember, as Steven Tyler said, Chicken Little tells you that the sky has fallen. Even if it do, you'll still come crawling back, my friend. Words to live by. But you know, the uh, the more I've thought about it, you know, we're, we're coming close to one year of sustained workouts. Um, I, I'm proud to say, my my personal opinion of this year, is that, and this is legit by the way, since January, I have skipped one workout. Now I want to put in some caveats here. Uh, I have not worked out while traveling, but I haven't been traveling that much. You know, we, we did go to Japan for like five days, and then we were at PAX for like five days. That's pretty much it. Um... I also did get sick and have to miss a week. But that, again, I've told you many times, that's not laziness, that's uh, respect for my fellow man. What day did I miss? Oh, I missed uh, the Friday morning after watching Avengers Endgame Thursday night. The movie is 75 hours long, I got like 3 hours of sleep and we had a meeting at the bank early in the morning as well. It was just the perfect storm. And you know... This is not meant to be, uh, braggadocious, really. I guess we might as well take it. The The workout accomplishment I'm most proud of is not, uh, you know, anything related to, you know, muscle growth or, you know, a, a one particularly strong lift or anything like that. It's getting down there every single day. You know, if you ask me in, in school, as an adult, what's the... What's the most prestigious award you could win? You know, sure, everybody wants to be the, the valedictorian. Mr. or Miss Congeniality, uh, best hair, most likely to succeed, etc., etc. I'm telling you, I think one of the top badges is perfect attendance. Consistency and discipline is underrated. Oh, I didn't need to do that. It's a skill that takes a while to develop, you know? Anybody can be naturally talented, you know? It doesn't take any skill to be talented. I know that sounds weird. <laughs> but, you know, it, discipline and consistency will beat talent plus laziness like 99% of the time. I always think about, like, the NHL. You got lots of naturally talent. I, I think it sets you up for failure, you know? In some ways, being, like, an exceptional uh, youth... Sets you up for failure as an adult. You know, I, I was part of uh, some... I don't even know if they use this terminology anymore, but... I was part of a few gifted student programs when I was younger. So you're fed for like a decade. It's like, oh, you're not like other kids. You're gifted. You don't have to work as hard to accomplish the same results. We don't have the, uh, the means to accommodate... Uh, you know, providing you with an ever-increasing swell of... Uh, education. Instead, we're just gonna put you in a class with other people like you, and uh, then when you get bored, you can talk to each other instead of just, you know, staring at the ceiling. 
You know, it, it, it did us a disservice, I think. Now, most of the people I went to school with, they're doing just fine. But, uh, you know, some of them, you're like, you, you see the pattern, which is like, uh, hey, they were, you know, smart enough in, like, elementary school, they never had to study. They went to middle school, never had to study. Still getting easy straight A's. High school, never had to study. They go to college, you gotta study. They don't study, they do worse. They're like, what the heck, my whole identity and worldview for years has hinged around being the guy who gets a you know the highest grade in every class they go through an identity crisis and all of a sudden it's like the velvet revolver music video for fall to pieces you know it's a it's a help it's a thing it's a thing dude hold on i really would like those i really would like those, okay. I think we got a good setup here. Thank you. I don't think I want Bob's brain though. Um, and guess what? Even if you're like, ha ha, NL, I short circuited the system. I was one of those people who uh, also didn't have to work hard in college. I just naturally got straight A's still. You know what? There's that's the thing. Even if you, you you make that happen, you get into the workforce, you gotta work hard, or at least you would benefit from working harder. And if you're like, nah, I got a job where that doesn't matter, my dad owns the company. Well then you're gonna potentially, is that what you wanna be on your deathbed? Is that how you're gonna audit your life? You're gonna be like, yeah, I'm dying, but on the bright side, I didn't work hard enough to realize the full potential of what I had while I was, you know, down here on this mortal coil. Is that what you aspire to? I. I mean, I've been there when I was a young, a young man, for sure, but I'm telling you, the more grown-up approach is to accept that, uh, you know, hard work is, uh, is a part of life. And to, to take pride in what you do whenever possible. And sleep easy, as a result. Uh, we don't really care about that right there. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents on the subject. I mean, you gotta do something. Let not man measure his life by the amount of seasons he watched on Netflix. That's that's my motto. That being said, uh, yesterday was my day off. I gotta tell you, I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, even when I do nothing, I do something. If that makes sense, like I I did some chores. Um, you know, I I did some meal prep. Make sure I got lunches for the rest of the week. Um, you know, we had some administrative stuff to sort out and yada yada yada. Went on a big Pokemon Go walk, but that, as far as I'm concerned, that is doing nothing. Um, hold on, we just want to see if we can get a better payout here. I'll try it on this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, but then apart from that, I was just sitting around. It was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, you know what? I feel like playing some video games. I'm proud to say I played some Apex Legends, which will probably surprise you, but, you know, I just felt like I was in the mood for some high-quality, uh, science fiction-esque gunplay. I got a win with two randoms, where I, uh, I, you're not gonna believe me, but I performed pretty well. Then, I was like, hey, Mouth, you wanna play some Apex Legends? And he was like, heck yeah, brother. He actually said the H-E double hockey sticks word, but I can't, uh, repeat that. Um, he said, heck yeah, brother. Within the first couple of games, we got another win, where we both played pretty well. I would say, to be honest, that we carried our random, but, again, that might surprise you. Then we played with Corey, and every game after that sucked. I'm not saying it was Corey's fault, but, <laughs> I think maybe it's once we got, uh, fully stacked. The game starts pairing you against squads that are fully stacked, and it becomes a little harder to, you know, to survive in that environment unless you're disproportionately better as well. See, that's where I have to start studying, is at that level. And that was pretty much it. I mean, apart from that, uh, basically just lounged around. It was nice. It's been, you know, things have been really, really... Uh, busy over here, as I've mentioned in Isaac a couple of times. It was nice to just, you know, I get out of the mindset that, like, you know, even your your rest time has to be productive. But I will admit that, you know, 
by the end of the the day yesterday, I was like, okay, I'm ready to I'm ready to be a little bit more active again. I don't want this to become a pattern. I went to bed feeling like I had basically, I mean, and quite literally is the case, but pretty much been useless for the whole day. <laughs> Which, that's my own thing to work on, I suppose. Is Again, I've said it uh, 20 times, probably 20 times a week since, you know, we're starting to record Isaac, but it's very bizarre when you're like, your job is playing video games, and then on the weekend you're like, eh, maybe I'll play like a few video games. But then, despite doing the same thing you do during your work week, but just not talking over it, you're like, ah, man. <laughs> Mentally, this just feels weird now. I don't know, I have heard other YouTubers say things like, you know, by... I don't know how we didn't get hit on that one, but... You know, by becoming a YouTuber, like, they stopped playing video games for amusement. It has not been my experience. Uh, I do feel like recording video games, you know, consistently throughout the week makes me want to get out of the house more when I have the time. Um, but definitely, I'm also still, like... At least, like, once every couple of months, I find myself enamored with a new game. And I'm like, oh, I want to play this. Maybe not for, you know, five or six hours a day. But here's the thing. I was going to go, uh, you know... Maybe watch the Vancouver Canucks game, and then I watched the first period at home. I mean, it was an away game. I wasn't going to, you know, fly to Calgary to watch it. But um, I watched the first period at home, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a bad one. This this is not appointment viewing. And uh, it turns out it was definitely not appointment viewing. We lost 3-0. Not an uh, exciting game to be at. Or, well, if you're a fan of the Calgary Flames, it was probably very exciting. But, all right, hold up here. The thing is, on this run right here, the right play is definitely to take Satanic Bible, but that's also very boring, and we're probably slash definitely gonna win anyway. I wouldn't say definitely, I guess, but everything is, is set up for our own possible and plausible success. So I don't really want to... Uh, I don't want to get rid of an item that adds a little bit of flair, just to take an item that, uh... You know, g gives us a, a stabler win. I don't want to fly on autopilot, you know? Let's do a couple of loop-de-loops on the way. It's the benefit of being low on the street counter, is like, who cares? <laughs> you know, I would... I would like to rebuild the streak, yes, but uh, this is like, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna mess around, probably want to do it a, a little bit on the early side. You know what I mean? Okay, that was a surprise, not a not an unwelcome one. But a surprise nonetheless. What we'd really like to see is more damage, but. This is actually like the antithesis of our past few runs. Or not our past few, really just the, the last run we had. Um, which was absolutely horrible and, and undermined my faith in this. Like, you, you know like in parliamentary governments? This is something people commonly say. The, uh, uh, parliament and thus by extension, you know, governmental function within the nation can be... Um, stalled or perhaps even stopped outright by what's called a vote of non-confidence. It's when the uh, when the parliament loses confidence that the current regime can actually pass legislation. They can throw in a, a vote of non-confidence. If the non-confidence vote passes, usually a general election is called. I'm very familiar with this process because there was like four years of Canadian politics where we had an election like every year. We were doing Australia cosplay. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that felt like a good one. Anyway, you, you guys have had a lot of prime ministers. I stopped learning their names. It's like, you know, when your parents start meeting your college girlfriend or something like that. You know, the first one, they're like, we're going to pay attention. Maybe, and not that I would have this experience to begin with. I mean, you bring home, like, the fifth girl. They're like, ah, we'll learn her name if she's still around by Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is, like, two very, very uh, insulting bits in a row. Yeah, sure, we'll take brittle bones. Um, 
But anyway, that that was what I had. I had a constitutional crisis with Isaac. It's like legitimately where I was at, where I was like, I don't know if this game is gonna be fun <laughs> anymore. I don't know if I have the confidence in this game to provide me with entertainment anymore. And it that's not an overreaction to one loss out of 20 runs, okay? I want that to be clear. It's if if you're approaching this from like, oh, 30 year old man baby can't handle losing every once in a while, um, wah wah wah. Then, then you're taking a very small-brained approach to it, just to be quite frank. Might as well try, I guess. Um, the reality of the situation is I don't really care if I lose. You know, I've lost thousands of times while recording this series over the years. Um, sometimes it bothers me, sometimes it doesn't. But when it bothers me, it's very rarely like, oh, we lost and the streak hits zero. It happens, but not that often. What does bother me is when you play a seed where, even now, looking back on it, I'm like, I don't know if we even stood a chance to win. And we, it, it wasn't that we got garbage items. We got items that usually you leverage to get better items in the future, but then they never came. It's like we invested our life savings in the, you know, Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme. And we were on the bottom rung of the totem pole. Give me this. <sighs> Might as well take Empty Vessel. I, well, I'm, perhaps not, I suppose. And uh, you know what? We might as well at least try that. And we here's the thing. It's too late for us to be hinging our whole life on Guppy. Statistically speaking, we will probably get one extra deal with the Devil on the next floor. Um, so I'm not... Uh, I'm not committing to the guppy aesthetic. So that's that's where I'm at. And and it is unfair and, and perhaps even just rude to suggest that, um, you know, Isaac has... That last run existed entirely because of bloat in items, okay? That's definitely, you know, once the narrative starts to get spun that way, it is hard to fight back against. It's a very seductive narrative. You're like, when the game was only in, you know, Rebirth's vanilla item pool, this would never have happened. Well... Maybe yes, maybe no, I guess, but I, I really do feel like it probably is more likely now. It's it's honestly just a little, it's a spate of bad luck to just, uh, you know, I feel like we had a number of runs where basically we never got statistical improvements at all. You know, we especially like the boss items, that's supposed to be like the, that's your engine, right? Like the boss items and item rooms. Item rooms can get a little zanier. But I had always conceived of boss items as being like, you know, this is, uh, you know, where you're gonna get bare minimum level of statistical improvement. I'm not saying you gotta give me an HP upgrade per floor, although there was a time where that was definitely, you know, more the case than not the case. But, you know, less of the items that are like, here's a, a, a tier effect that is inert and does nothing for you, and... You know, more of the, hey, here's potentially a chance for you to get, like, a speed upgrade, exactly. Or a tears upgrade, or a yada yada yada, you know? I still thought, I, like, any, if anything, I should say, we put up a pretty valiant performance on the chest on the last run. Like, we did, like, 12 rooms or more, which both happened to be dead ends. Haha. -ha. Got him. Not to mention, I mean, it was it was just the perfect confluence of, like, every complaint that I have about Isaac. Which is not to say that I don't like the game in its current state, but... The stuff that does annoy me about it from time to time was on display. You know? Hey, can't see your HP. Can't see any of the items. Next floor, can't see any of the items. Next floor, can't see your HP. We'll talk about that one in a second. Perhaps we should have bet on Guppy. Okay, it is what it is. I'm willing to give this one more shot here. Okay. I'm willing to give this one more shot here. Should I? Oh, it, almost certainly not, no. But <laughs> I, I believe. Hagalaz! Alright, the thing is, I'm willing to give it just one more shot here. Because I think, I think you got something good in there. Clearly, I'm dumb. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
We don't want this stuff. We want to yeet that, get a damage upgrade, which is actually very nice. I don't want Rib of Greed. Well, then stop picking it up. Very valid, valid concern. Anyway, I'm just saying it's part and parcel with crossing the Sahara Desert, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And we are in the Sahara right now. Begging for new Isaac content. And, uh, I mean, it's en route. So we're going to ruin Empty Vessel um, in, in order to keep our HP high. I guess I didn't realize this, but Brittle Bones, uh, when you lose the Bone Hearts, they give you permanent tears upgrades. That's actually... I mean, it's, it's, it's nice, but it is a little bit of revisionist history for me. Because now it makes it seem like uh, it was actually wise for us to take a small risk to get a, a big potential reward. Really what the case was, was that uh, I just wanted to see what that demon judgment would pay out. <laughs> oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Anyway. I do believe that. I've been trying to tease it apart, you know? When I, whenever I talk about uh, working out, I, I kind of always take this approach because you know, there's, there's a lot of workout sources on the internet that I really feel are steeped in... I'm never the guy that invokes this, but this is like the closest I've come to understanding, really, the phrase toxic masculinity. <clears throat> when I, like, read content that is, uh, you know, designed to appeal to men who are trying to get bigger or stronger, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it is steeped in this weird, like, you know... 5,000 years ago, your ancestors had to hunt to survive. And today, you're gonna... Oh, I have pneumonia. I don't want to work out. Screw that, you know. Activate your inner caveman with our nootropic stack. And I'm like, dude, this is just... I mean, that's just dumb. <laughs> for one, but also it's like a... It's a really harmful attitude, you know, that... Yikes. Uh... Where do you think we're at on it? Th I still think we're fine on HP. You know, I think that a, a lot of that philosophy is designed to I empower the person reading it to falsely feel like they're superior to people who are not doing that exact same thing uh, by making the people that are not doing that thing look like they're cowards or, you know, etc. So they don't have the strength that you've got. Because you read this content, you are, uh, you know, one step ahead of your competition already. I mean, I guess that's what it is. is Makes you, makes you look at your, your fellow man as competition. And I, I've been, I wouldn't say struggling, because, you know, a lot of that stuff is still useful to read as long as you just strip away the parts that make no sense. It's always like, hey, step one, make sure your form is on point. You don't want to get injured. And I'm like, all good. Step two, rest is one of the most important parts of recovery. Make sure you're getting an adequate amount of sleep time. All right, it's all good, brother. So far, so good. What's next? Step three, remember that you're descended from the strongest uh, blah, blah, and now, okay, I'll go. can we move on to step four, please? I don't really need this. <laughs> I'm not saying it's useless. Maybe there's other people on planet Earth for whom they're like, oh, I really needed that. But for me, I'm like, you know, I don't need that. I want a more philosophical fitness guru, you know? But, I mean, the, the problem is my, my workout philosophy means that people will not digest your content. Because, literally, like, you can't make daily blog posts that are, like, you know. The, the true pleasure of going to the gym is the routine of being at the gym. People would be like, I'm not going to buy your, I'm not going to buy your supplements, Grandpa. These are good items. I, I do worry we screwed up our HP a little bit. But, you know, it, it's a fun run regardless. Let's let's give it a shot here. Um, and I, if you think this is a workout-based anecdote, it's not really meant to be. I think it applies to a lot of other things. Curse of the Unknown for the second floor in a row. Um, like, one of the things I think it, it also comes down to, like, I, I, I've seen it in a different sense, but, like, when I was learning the program, there's uh, a lot of... I mean, I, I think it's a different sort of uh, machismo... Instead of being like, you know, hey, you're exceptional because you're, like, so manly. Instead, a lot of the programming discourse is driven by, like, 
you're smarter than everybody else and like you're a rock star and uh you know learning c plus plus isn't for everybody you know it's <laughs> if you want to coast and still make compilable code go to c sharp this is for real programmers who aren't afraid to manually allocate and dispose of their own memory, you know? Like, I'm just like, man, you could have saved, like, you ever, you ever hear the expression, brevity is the soul of wit? You could have saved, I, I recognize the irony as a man who's talking here for 40 minutes while playing a video game he's played 25,000 times uh, in the past, but, um... You know, it's like those recipes that are always like, hey, it's chana masala, but, you know, before I can give you the four-step recipe for chana masala, I have to spin you a little yarn about, oh, my husband Jeremiah and I were in the fjords of uh, Svalbard in Norway, one of the most northern part. you know, you get the idea. I just give the advice, dude. Why does it have to be steeped in this weird kind of exceptionalism? The reason the pursuit of something, you know, like a hobby of any sort is so important is not so that you can be better than other people, it's so that you can be better than your current self. I guess that's what I'm trying to distill it as. You know, if, if your motivation for doing something... I think we're gonna per throw this first. Let's see what we get. Mm, I think it's okay. Yeah, okay, actually with rubber cement I think it's pretty great. This is just one man's opinion, because, like, I, I think that there's room for nuance here. But what I was going to say is, like, if your motivation for pursuing something is to be better than other people, I think that can only take you so far, or at least it can only take me so far. What's way more valuable, in my experience, is learning to cultivate the desire to be better than you were last week. Because that's, uh... That's an endless fuel source. That's cold fusion right there. Because you can always be better than you were last week. Some weeks you're going to screw it up. That's okay. You know why? Next week's another shot. Run. Burkano. I'm willing to tough it out. I believed. Ah! What a terrible performance right there. That We, we got greedy. There was no need for that. No, I do not want Mega Bean. Please. Dude, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm feeling the nerves. You heard of the Mystery Science Theater, theater? theater 3000 character Tom Servo? Right now, I'm Tom Nervo. Oh, dude, I love the analog tears. Look at this. Didn't dawn on me that that was... Uh, that was in the cards for us. Just, you're giving me so many items, and I am grateful. But consider providing to me some HP. That's, I'm not saying that's all we need, but that's all we need to at least live through one hit without being, uh, without being Tom Nervo. Anyway, that's, that's my piece of life advice for this episode, you know? I think that's why hobbies are important. Uh, I didn't really want that, I guess, but I'll, I can use Black Rune up here. You know, I never, when I was younger, I didn't have hobbies. My hobby was, like, playing video games. And that's, like, I'm not looking down on that. I told you, I played, not only did I play five hours of Apex yesterday, I played, oh my lord. It's been a while since we had something like this. I played five hours of Apex yesterday, and I got two Apex Royale victories, so obviously I'm a real gamer, not an enemy of the gamers. Um, but, having a, a hobby, like, outside of that, where you can have demonstrable, reliable progress that benefits you, I recognize now as an adult the, the benefit of that, you know? It's like an artificial way to introduce a sense of progression into your own life, while simultaneously tricking you into becoming a better person as is. You know, maybe, you're, maybe your habit is uh, carpentry, maybe your habit is working out. Maybe your habit is, uh, or your hobby, I should say, is uh, cooking or something like that. Every week you're constantly learning, reinforces your self-esteem, raises your confidence, makes you a more capable person. It's not about being stronger than Jimmy so that when you go to the powerlifting meetup, you can make him cry. 
Although Jimmy sucks, so I understand. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.